Okay, protons, neutrons, electrons. Um, charge, mass number, and atomic number. Uh, remember what I said about these tables. I am not going to keep uh, the, the columns in the same order. So you can't just memorize the second two are the same. And you, know, you can't memorize that. If you add the third and the fifth, you're going to get the last. Um, You've got to understand what these things mean. Uh, so let, let, me, let me go back a page here um, and explain them. All right, so we know in the nucleus of an atom, which is the center, and then they have the electron cloud with the electrons floating around. Well, in the nucleus are the protons and the neutrons. Protons abbreviated with a P plus because they're positive. Neutrons with N and a zero because they're neutral. And then the electrons are floating around um, the outside of the um, nucleus in the electron cloud, and they're E with a minus because they're negative. Okay, so the... Um, Identity of an element is determined by the number of protons in the nucleus. Let me say that again. What determines the identity of an element is the number of protons. That is called the atomic number. So the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus, and that's what tells us what element we have. So if I have you know, seven protons, I can refer to a periodic table, and I see um, that uh, nitrogen is number seven. And so nitrogen is what I have every time I have seven protons. Now, isotopes are atoms of the same element with a different mass. And that is because of the number of neutrons that vary. So the number of neutrons changes what is referred to as the mass number, and the mass number determines the isotope. So mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. Simply add them together, protons plus neutrons. So protons plus neutrons equals mass number. Now the mass on the periodic table is an average atomic mass. It takes into consideration the mass number of all of the known isotopes for a particular element based on their relative abundance, so it is a, a weighted average, but essentially it's an average of all the isotopes of the atoms consisting of that element. So when I look on the periodic table for lithium and I see lithium is 6.94, well, that's the atomic mass of lithium. What that means is I'm taking into consideration all of the isotopes of lithium Averaged, again, according to relative abundance, but essentially, you know, an average of all the isotopes. All right, so let's go back to this then. Um, and then the last column we got to figure out is charge. Well, charge is dictated not by changing protons, because that changes the identity of the element, but by changing the number of electrons. Electrons can vary to give us um, a charge. All right, so the first one I have here, now each row I give you something different. Um, this right here is called the isotope symbol. An isotope is also called a nuclide. Nuclide is just a particular isotope. Now we're talking about atoms here, atoms. So this is an atom of lithium, Li11. Now this 11 right here, and that is designated by the upper left-hand corner, that is the mass number for this particular atom of lithium. So 11 goes over here in the mass number column. All right, now I know it's lithium, so I'm going to... Grab a periodic table here. I'm going to find lithium on my periodic table, and I see that it has an atomic number of three. The periodic table itself is arranged according to atomic number, starting in the upper left with hydrogen and continuing one as you go left to right, top to bottom. Um, so lithium is number three, therefore it has three protons. The atomic number and the number of protons are always the same, no exceptions. Okay, so now neutrons. Well, I know that the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. So my total number of protons plus neutrons is 11 in this particular one. I have three protons, so I have eight neutrons. 11 minus three gives me eight. So if I know the mass number, I can subtract the protons to get the neutrons. All right, so now the charge. The charge is a plus one. What that means is I have more protons than I do electrons, because protons are positive and I have a positive um, so in order to become a plus one, you take away an electron. You can find the charge by always doing the protons minus the electrons. So three minus two will give me a positive one. All right, so that's the first row. Second row. 
All right, so I'm given, this time I'm not given the mass number, but I'm given the number of neutrons. I'm also not even given the protons or the identity because I'm given the electrons, and I know the charge is a plus 2. So if the electrons are 10 and the charge is a plus 2, that means I must have 12 of them because 12 minus 10 is positive 2. If it's 12 protons, that means the atomic number is 12. And if the atomic number is 12, that means I have Mg, magnesium. Now, we're talking about specific isotopes so I have to put the mass number in the upper left-hand corner, but I don't have it yet, but I'm going to add the protons plus the neutrons. So 12 plus 15 is 27. So that's the mass number, so 27 goes in the upper left-hand corner of my isotope symbol. All right, next one. I have the protons. So I definitely know that the atomic number is 20, because the number of 20 is, or the number of protons is the atomic number. And then when I refer to my periodic table, I can see that I have calcium, atomic number 20. Once again, I'm given the protons plus the neutrons, so I have to find the mass number, adding them together, and then that goes in the upper left-hand corner. Now I have a plus 2 charge, so that means I have lost 2 electrons again. All right, the last row. This time it's negative. Well, if it's negative, that must mean I have more electrons than I do protons. How many more? Well, 2 more. So that means I only have 8. I'm given the mass number. I know the number of protons, so I must have 10 neutrons, 18 minus 8. Now, if it's atomic number 8, I have oxygen, and this would be oxygen with a mass number of 18. Remember, we do oxygen 16. Well, that's the average atomic mass in the periodic table. This is a specific atom of oxygen with 8 protons and 10 neutrons in the nucleus, you know, a specific isotope. Okay, let's try another one. So here was a homework assignment we had. Um, basically the same thing. Let me change the width of my pen here. It writes a little better. All right, so I'm given the atomic number. Notice the columns are in different order. Um, atomic number is always the same as the number of protons. The number of neutrons plus the number of protons equals the mass number. So I must have 13 because 20 minus 7 is 13. So now the electrons is determined by the charge. I have a minus 3 charge. So that means if I have 7 protons, I must have 10 electrons because it has to equal a negative 3. So 7 minus 10. Protons minus electrons will give you charge. Okay, calcium. Calcium is an um, atomic number 20, which means I have 20 protons. The mass number is in the upper left-hand corner, 42. So I have 22 electrons. It's a positive 2 charge, so I have 18 electrons. Uranium-238, 238, 238 is the mass number. Uranium is 92, 92 protons. Charge is zero, so protons and electrons are equal this time. Um, and then my neutrons, 238 minus 92, 146. All right, next one, I have electrons. Zero charge again, therefore protons and electrons are equal. Number 43 on our periodic table is Tc, technectium, Tc. So 43 for the atomic number. The mass number is going to be the protons plus uh, the neutrons, so 90. And again, 90 would go in the upper left-hand corner of the symbol. Um, and then the last one, um, I'm given the number of protons is 19, so 19 is the atomic number. 19, therefore, is K, potassium. 41, because of the mass number. Now, uh, 41 minus 19 um, will give us the number of neutrons. So we have uh, 22 neutrons. And the charge, I have an extra proton. So I've lost an electron, so plus one. All right, so that's how you do the protons, neutrons, electrons. Mass number, atomic number, and the isotope symbol, taking into consideration the charge for the electrons.